let's take a look at some of your non-political questions. Simmerick has said, um, Ellie, did you see that the LAPD, DEA and USPS are opening an investigation into Matthew Perry's death and where he got the ketamine? Um, there's also something here about Courtney Cox reporting that Matthew visited her often. Um, now, Semerick said that um, I did a video on Matthew Perry shortly after he died. And so um, they were wondering if I had any impressions. Well, I'm not going to do a reading on this. I actually think that what we're going to find is that the cards nailed it to begin with. The, the reports of Matthew Perry's death initially in the first 48 hours or even the first week were saying that there were no drugs in his system or anything like that. The cards said in the middle of all of that, that his body um, gave up as a result of his addictions and um and that one of the one of the messages that he had for the rest of us was you know to remember not to begin down that path because it will change and maybe even alter your life in ways that you can't even imagine and so he wanted to make sure that he was remembered for the things that he did that were wonderful, that made us laugh and, and love him in the way that we did, but also that we remember how tragically life can unfold when if we lose ourselves in the same way that he did. And that the cards seem to indicate that drugs were a big part of his the reason for him dying. Um, if I remember correctly, I think he died in his jacuzzi it may have been through drowning or it may have just been that um, he had an overdose of something. I don't know. But originally the reports were, were that he had no drugs in his system. Now it appears that he did. The cards believe that he did anyway. And so the original, I'm going to leave the original reading to stand as it is. You can find it in the, I think I have a playlist called Celebrities. And Matthew Perry may even be the most recent one that I've done. I, I can't recall. But um I really liked him. He made, you know, he just, you can't, you can't look at Matthew Perry and not smile because he's got that funny, goofy kind of lovable brokenness about him. And um, it's one of those people I think we're really going to miss, but I think the cards got it right the first time. We're just now going to have to wait for that story to unfold so that we can see that for ourselves. Thanks for the question. This is such a lovely comment and it does also have a question, but it's quite a long comment, but I'm, I'm going to read it out. And there is a link associated with it, which you can find um, on the Ask Ellie a Question video um, comment section. So the, the comment comes from Seeking Peace and it says, Hi Ellie, hello. I want to thank you for introducing me to, the, to Chris Bledsoe and his story. I purchased and read the book and it left me with great hope. Although I'm almost 67 years old, I I, I want to know that this world and all its inhabitants will be better off than what I've watched happen over my lifetime. And much of it depends on humanity's behavior towards each other and all life forms. I had the great privilege of living in some of the most beautiful, interesting and inspiring places on this earth and have been lucky enough to meet some wonderful, generous and enlightened souls. That's wonderful. I've always hoped that mankind would one day understand and practice giving out, or in inverted commas, giving out good, um, which is placing compassion and kindness over profits. I grocery shop at an old hippie store loaded with uh, lots of organic health food options here in uh, Oregon. Here, here's my question. Will we, as a nation and the world, see a movement towards businesses owned by their purpose? Um, and then um, Seeking Peace ad adds, I've attached a very short article to better explain how it's set up and run. Thanks for all that you do. It's been nothing but a pleasure to watch your channel grow. Thank you so much. Now, the, um, the link is on a website called klcc.org and it's entitled can a business be owned by its purpose a growing number of oregon companies say yes 
and it was published on the 17th of May of this year. I know exactly what you mean. Oh, that's a cute little store too. Um, I'll, um, if I put, I can't put the link in the description box because YouTube considers that to be misbehaving. I don't even know what's going on with that, but they will sometimes um, give you black marks for that. But um, I will make sure that I put something up here that helps you to find it if you're interested. I used to visit a very similar kind of grocery store in London when I lived in, in, in Britain. It wasn't in my local area, but it was a wonderful, um, they call them co-op or cooperatives. And basically they're community run. Um, they tend to be very honestly priced and they're local produce and they're run um, you, you may have a couple of um, you may have a couple of employees, say, for example, the manager might be an employee. I don't know, but they're run by volunteers and they are a big supermarket. So, you know, they're not they're not probably Walmart sized or anything, but they're a proper supermarket that has canned goods and fresh uh, fruit and meat and everything. And um, it's really lovely. And because it's volunteer based. It's managed with love. Um, it's happy and vibrant when you go in and and there's a lot of very inexpensive items. So if you are poor or, you know, not wealthy and in some air pockets of London, you know, just your rent alone is costing you everything you've got. You can go in and shop in these areas and these co-ops um, are relatively new in Britain as well. I think that um, the one that I went to visit ended up on the news because it was so new to London. And this was probably about 10, 15 years ago. I do hope that it's still running. The important thing is uh, that it is it requires the, the volunteers, the commitment from the volunteers. But the funny thing is, someone who is volunteering in a co-op supermarket of that nature tends to keep the supermarket cleaner. They, um, they tend to just take care because they really do care. It was a very nice experience shopping there, to be honest. It really was. And it would be nice to see more of that. So let's have a look here about the concept of business down the line being more aligned to this having a purpose or, or operating its purpose in this way. Let's see what the concept is saying. Do you know, Oregon is an interesting state and often um, I hear a lot of really wonderful things about the state of Oregon and the way that it um, sort of shifts towards that purpose. There's also an, an entirely other side of Oregon that seems to coexist and I don't quite understand how the state operates in that way, but it'd be an interesting, I've never been to Oregon, I'd like to visit one day I think. Let's have a look here. So we've got the tower in reverse, the hermit in reverse, and the sun in reverse. Whew, okay, so the tower in reverse is about slight setbacks, um, stress and illness perhaps. The hermit in reverse is about fear of being alone. Um, there can be a self-pity element here as well and a, a kind of an identity crisis and then the sun in reverse is about a mediocre level of success I think that what this tells me is that there is going to be a shift forward but you know humanity is um, they find shifting away from the status quo very stressful and also this fear of being alone element could be, you know, being a pioneer in that area is really risky and everyone's afraid to go first. I actually think with the exception of some, you know, a very small percentage of people who are just nasty because they're just always going to be. But with the exception of that very small percentage of people, most people, most of humanity, the vast majority of humanity are good decent, loving, caring people who are trapped in a cycle of this commercialized kind of greed, materialistic element of earth, because that's what makes the world go round. I mean, 
I try so hard not to be that way. I mean, I try to give everything that I give to the world without expecting anything in return. But I also have to pay my bills. And it's a balance, you know. I as soon as um as soon as I see a, you know, I'll see a comment from someone, even here on YouTube, that that will say that they're opposed to me doing a certain thing because they think it's commercial in nature. Like, why is it that only your patrons get something? Or why is it that there has to be advertising on your site? Or why is it that you're accepting sponsorship? Or why is it, you know, that kind of thing? Why do I want to PayPal you? Or why would I want to, you know, listen to the ads or whatever it is? And that's because the world goes round and the bills keep coming and you've got to be able to pay the bills. If you stop paying the bills, then the channel disappears because I can no longer afford to do it. But I try to balance it also with as much um, generosity and heart as I can because I'm genuinely here for the right reasons, I hope. And I want to be able to live, you know, walk the talk. I think I'm just an average person in that respect because I think everyone is balancing that. And everybody wants the world to get better, wants people to get better. But it's also a very stressful thing, which means we're going to get there. This is a wonderful card, regardless of whether it's upright or in reverse. But it's sort of a little bit, it's got that touch of apprehension, which means that slowly, gradually, We'll take two steps forward and one back and three steps forward and one back and, you know, but we're slowly going to inch our way towards something better. That's what it looks like. Dragging ourselves along the way because we're fearful as well. But I do think it looks like we're heading there. And the closer we get to our destination, the more momentum we'll have because the more confidence will grow inside us. Thanks for the question. Uh, Lamoni Magnet has said, hi Ellie, hello. Could you do a reading on whether a new monetary system replacing flat central banks is coming and whether UBI or otherwise um, known as universal basic income is in the cards for America? So that's two questions, a new monetary system or UBI? Okay, so UBI, this... Um, I know what that is. Universal, um, the universal basic income. This is something that Andrew Yang, the Democratic candidate for 2020, or in, in primary candidate anyway, for 2020, was guaranteeing that he was going to implement if he became president. And I think it was that every American, regardless of their income or you know, um, or, or or state of wealth in the country, would be entitled immediately to a certain percentage of government money a month. You know, I don't know whether it was 500 or 1,000 or 2,000 or something a month, probably a round figure of some kind. Let's just say $1,000 a month to be able to help um, sh sort of lessen the gap and to alleviate, help to alleviate poverty. Um, let's look at that one first. So is there a possibility that UBI that universal basic income is something in America's foreseeable future. Now, you know, America is going to be around for a long time. Sorry, itchy back. <laughs> America is going to be around for a little while. So I don't want to look at it in terms of forever. Anything could be possible forever. Let's have a look in the next um, 10 years. Okay, so in the next 10 years, universal basic income. This is the guaranteed money from the government to every citizen regardless of their wealth. So we've got the six of wands in reverse, the knight of pentacles, and the devil in reverse. Okay, so the answer is unlikely. UBI in particular, unlikely. We've got this obstructionist element. We've got the loyal to the coin element here, which is sort of, um, I think it kind of makes sense. And then we've got this um, complete disregard for others. So the addictive commercialized kind of greed system. 
So this this reading would indicate that there would be extremely strong opposition. The way that America is run with its the, as a capitalist um, nation, not that there's anything wrong with capitalism, but as a capitalist nation, it's not it's not a socialist country. You do have social programs that help to prop things up but in the current frame of you know 10 years it looks as though this would be a the capitalist system remains and so i actually think that there would be way too much um opposition and obstruction to something like that happening in fact it could get kind of nasty and so uh, the answer to that when it comes to ubi is not is no but the different alternative monetary system let's have a look what was the question there disappeared right there it is I think um, I've lost I've lost it but I think it was uh, will there be a different a new monetary system that I think is possible um, but let's just see if we can get a definition for that. So we're looking at in the next 10 years, for example, if there's going to be a something other than the, the banking system. I certainly hope that it's not the chip in the body where everybody, you know, has their worth uh, sitting as a chip in their body and then they kind of use their arm as a barcode. And when they run out of stuff, they can no longer do anything. I hope it's something like that. And where you could be penalized, where they withdraw points from your arm and weird stuff like that. Um, Elon Musk would like it to be like that, I think. But let's have a look here. An alternative to the banking system. Ace of Cups. King of Cups and the Hermit. Um, this looks positive. So yes, it looks like there is something else. It could be an alternative running concurrent with the banking system because I don't think the banking system is going to collapse in the next 10 years. I mean, you know, you might end up with a crisis here and there, but I don't think it's going to die off. We've got the Ace of Cups. This is about the ultimate being love, compassion, sense of self and relationships. We've got the King of Cups which is a friendly, gentle male energy, also equally um, compassionate to the Ace of Cups. And then we have the power of one um, and wisdom and kind of looking back at what you've achieved. I actually think that this there's likely to be an increase in like a bartering kind of, I think that this friendly bartering, you give and I give system, and this is where we're giving um, what we've been able to achieve for ourselves. We look back on the legacy of what we have and we're able to share it with others. I think it's closer to, rather than moving forward to something like putting microchips in people's arms and heads and things to be able to extract wealth from them or inject wealth into them, depending on who they are, or control them with this agent inside their uh, biology, I think this is more about um, something that has a greater degree of compassion and earthiness to it, where you give what you have, which is generally your expertise, because that's the expertise here. And then we have this closeness and relationship element. So I think it's more bartering. It could also be similar to the previous question about community-based businesses where um, they're kind of living their purpose because people are um, are actively wanting to ha create this element of compassion in their business. That's what it looks like. And if that's the case, then it might start small, but it will become a bigger wave as time goes on. Thanks for the question. I'm not sure if I could do this one in justice entirely, but I may think about how to turn this into a radio show episode. Um, anyway, Sherry Berenzi, Berenzi has said, Ellie, hello. I wonder if our soul's purpose is coded into our DNA. Given DNA's role in personality, health, etc., 
Is it the mechanism for transcribing the possible roadmap for our lives? And um, there's also a question here about junk DNA, which I'm not going to get into that. I don't know what that is. And maybe um, when I start doing research on the topic, I'll um, find out more information and look at it down the line. But let's just have a look at the connection between DNA and our soul's purpose. Is there a relationship there? So I th vaguely remember, did I, I may, I don't know whether I saw an interview with someone or I was watching a documentary or listening to a podcast. I don't know what it was, but my head is full of so much information. I'm starting to lose track of where it all comes from. I think I remember someone mentioning the fact that DNA is linked to all kinds of things that, that could very well have either a direct or an indirect relationship to the soul. Don't ask me though. I have no idea what it is. I just remember hearing something vaguely. It, it just This question prompted the memory. Maybe it'll come to me later anyway. Let's just see. Is there a relationship between the, the soul and a person's DNA? Seems reasonable that there would be, doesn't it? So we've got the Ten of Wands, the Two of Swords, and then Three of Swords. So the Ten of Wands is about um, burden, tough times, responsibility. There's also perhaps stress here as well. Burden and responsibility. Now, the question was actually about the soul's purpose. Okay. And then we've got the two of swords, which is about having a fear of reality and hiding from the truth or hiding from the facts. The three of swords is about miscommunication, hurtful words and a painful realization. So um, I'm going to put down one more card, but let me tell you what I've got here. This stress, tough times, burden and responsibility. You know, a soul is given a, a terrestrial body and is told this is your, this is your burden to bear for this earthly lifespan. That could be what this is. And it has no idea. At the moment of birth, it's born with a blindfold. And, and the soul has no idea of what it's about to encounter. Over the course of a lifetime here, it's the pains and struggles of life that actually bring you the realization. Have you noticed that the most evolved people in, their, in, in life are generally the ones who have experienced um, challenges in their lifetime. The person who was born with a silver spoon in their mouth that never had to lift a finger, never had to worry about anything uh, and, and coasted through life with everything basically every day being handed to them like a gift. They never really expanded. They never learned anything. They, they continued to be a child, a childlike mentality. And they don't, be, they don't really evolve in their lifetime. This is the case. You can kind of see it with the privilege, with a lot of privileged people. They tend to be like that. It's the people who've experienced hardship or challenges in some way or tragedies that have evolved with a realization of the truth of what their burden is. And I, I think that's what this reading is saying. So let's have a look. And it could be that it's that's what the DNA is doing is it's coding the commitment of the burden to bear in the life which unfolds. But let's just see what we have here. And then we have um, conflicting ideas, um, lack of cooperation, and lack of balance. 
All right, so in that case, let's keep going. Put down four more cards. The unexpected difficult event here. Secrets and mystery and going within. And then the intuitive link to the spiritual world. The loyal knight with an eye on their own prosperity. And then the empress, which is abundance and fertility and growth. All right, so let's let's do this. We've we've I think the reason why this is a wands card is it's the inspiration and action. This is the ins inspiration for the new life, I think. And that's what the DNA, it's almost calculating the inspirations for the new life. This is what you're going to be learning in this terrestrial life that we're going to give you this time round. Many of the lessons will be unexpected and difficult. At the point of birth, you can't see it. It's a mystery. It's hidden. It's the spirit, the connection to the spiritual world where all the secrets are revealed. But here, it's a mystery. So we're married to a material world here. We're born into a material world and we're loyal to that. But as time goes on, we kind of have this slow awakening through the hardships and pain and suffering that we have as humans, whether it be small things or big things, the challenges that we face. That's where our realizations come from the pain, because when something is painful, it then it's a little bit like um, going to the gym and working your muscle and you split your muscle and then it, that the healing of that muscle makes it stronger. You're not really splitting the muscle, but you know, the, the, the trauma that you give to the muscle when you're pumping weights is what helps it to grow. You're supposed to pump weights one day and then rest and then it grows in the rest day. And that's how you build your muscle. This card looks a little bit the same in a material environment that we are loyal to because we're blind to the spiritual world. Here we have this lack of cooperation. So the challenges are constantly coming to us. It's never going to be easy. But ultimately, we've got this fertility and abundance, which is the, the reward of having gone through the experience and having kept our commitment to the purpose of our life. And I think that's what this is. So to simplify the reading, I think that what it's saying is that there the DNA may be where... The DNA may be where the soul's purpose is documented on the earthly element of who we are when we're born into this world and we're born blind as to what our soul's purpose is. And the whole point of life is to go through all of the struggles that slowly reveal our soul's purpose. And as difficult as it is and as much as we resist and the, the fact that we're, we're trying to deliver on a spiritual commitment that we've made but we're doing it in a material existence it's it's very much an oxymoron and it competes with itself throughout our lives but ultimately our destiny is to get to that end of the process where hopefully we've realized through the pain that we've experienced and the growth that we've had as a result of that that the fertility and abundance is our reward of having of when, when we return back to where we came from and then probably agree to do it all over again so yes I think the cards have explained it in a way that's probably far more complex than we needed but I'm always grateful for that and I think the answer is yes there is a connection so thanks for the question I love your woo-woo questions. I love your woo-woo questions. Some of them I don't even understand what you're talking about when you ask me the question. I've got to go and do research just to know what you mean. But I do love your woo-woo questions. So keep on asking. Thank you so much for watching. This is Ellie Dreams and Under. I love knowing you're here and I'll see you in my dreams.